Evolution. Isn't it a theory? It used to be. Now it's taught as science. But if we look at it logically, does it devolve? I think it does. Let's talk about it. Shalom everybody and welcome to Beit Tefillah. I've had a very strong curiosity in the natural world and everything that the Creator made since I was a very little guy. And uh, I've collected a lot of things like seashells and uh, meteorites and rocks and fossils and minerals and all that for years. And uh, here's a meteorite right here. There's a metal one. And here's a stony one. We'll talk about those in a minute. I want to talk about evolution for a second. It's just as much of a religion as Christianity is. They don't use the Bible, but just as Christianity, they'll argue and they'll go way out of their way to defend their beliefs. To be religious doesn't mean you have to believe in the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hinduism and Buddhism are both religions. And they have many gods. I don't think they use our Bible. Religion is defined at dictionary.com as, number one, a set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe. Number two, a specific fundamental set of beliefs and practices generally agreed upon by a number of persons or sects. Number three, the body of persons adhering to a particular set of beliefs and practices. Evolution falls within all three of these groups. We who believe in the Creator believe He created everything in the world just by speaking. But if we go into the Hebrew language, speaking, the word, the word is dabar. Uh, that would be the word. The word to create is bara. The first three words in the Torah, the Old Testament, are bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning created Elohim. Bara is create. Av is father, and Ka is with. If you put those words together in a sentence, it would be Av bara ka dabara, which means the father creates with his word. It's not something that a magician uses just to pull a rabbit out of a hat. There's a meaning behind that phrase. That's where it comes from. All right? Back to the evolutionists. Evolutionists believe that there was nothing. Then all of a sudden, there was a big bang. And then all this matter appeared. We've got the earth, we've got the moon, we've got a bunch of water and a bunch of rocks. There wasn't any dirt yet because dirt is made up of mostly other decayed matter. Okay? How there was nothing, and then there became something. I don't know what exploded if there was nothing. And then from nothing, matter suddenly appears. Kind of like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. It kind of appears. But to believe that sounds a whole lot like the Father creating something from nothing just by speaking. So what they believe is very similar to what we believe, those of us who believe in the Creator, that He created the world and everything in it. But we are the weird ones to the evolutionists. Isn't that absurd? So apparently, there's a bang, and then here's the Earth, and it's just sat here and waited for something to just come sailing in on a meteorite, bust open, and for life to start on this planet. There's a big problem with that. And that's why I got my meteorites out tonight. Okay? Now, most meteorites fall into two main categories. You got your iron meteorites, you have your stony meteorites. This is not a meteorite lesson, and I'm not going to go into the combinations you can get from these two. But the fact remains is take your iron meteorite, you have what they call thumbprints in here, or regmaglyphs. These are from this thing getting so hot when it tumbled through our atmosphere that it melted this metal. And the stony meteorites get what's called a fusion crust on the outside. This one is uh, kind of a fossilized meteorite, so it's, uh, it's not so black anymore. But these things will be jet black and look like they were baking an oven for three months. They'll be just black when they come down, the stony ones will. 
rocks can melt. And if they come in falling in one direction, they're called Orion meteorites because they'll have flow lines on there because they didn't tumble like most meteorites do. An Orion in one is kind of rare with the flow lines. It's, it's kind of pretty, actually, the way it works. So, let's talk about that. We just talked about these meteorites, both the metal ones and the stone ones, getting so hot that they melt, and most of them burn up. And the ones that don't burn up, the majority of those fall in the ocean. So are we to even expect that if something were to come in on a meteorite, a piece of bacteria, that it would survive melted rock or metal coming through the atmosphere? <clears throat> oh no? Oh, that's right. They're supposedly inside the rock. Okay. So... This thing was formed when rock melted, and it survived for how many years now, according to the evolutionists, billions and billions of years coming through the space before it finally hit our Earth. But what if it fell into the water and if it didn't break open? Okay, so we'll assume it fell on the land then. But what if it didn't split open and just embedded in the dirt like most of them do? Okay, so we'll say for argument's sake that this thing came down, it hit on the ground, but it hit another rock, and it cracked open. What if the impact would have killed the bacteria? <clears throat> if it hit hard enough to bust open a rock, we'd assume that this tiny little fragile bacteria survived? And what if the meteorite didn't split at the exact place that the... What if it didn't hit there? What if it was way over here inside this melted rock? What about that? <clears throat> okay, so we'll just suppose that it survived for billions of years inside this rock. After first living through being encased in molten rock or metal in the first place, because we all know that there's super bacteria out there that can survive this, right? Then we'll assume it didn't cook or burn up completely when it was coming through our atmosphere. We'll assume that. We'll assume it didn't fall in the water, it didn't embed on the dirt, but it hit perfectly on another rock which just happened to break open at the exact place that this tiny little guy was hiding in there after all these years without the impact killing it, which was strong enough to break solid rock or metal. So this little guy crawled out and started eating what? It was supposedly a sterile planet, remember, if this is how life started. There was no trees, there was no grass, there was no other bacteria, there was no other life forms. What was it gonna eat? Was it gonna hang out long enough for another billion years and wait for another one of these to fall down and another little guy to crawl out and hopefully it could eat it? Then how was it gonna reproduce? <clears throat> We're talking about evolution, that things had to evolve, right? How many times have we heard this? We well, don't understand. It just had to evolve to better itself and survive in its environment. Really? So let me get this straight. This organism survived without eating, without water, and without air in the vacuum of space in temperatures the coldest they can get for however long, hurtling through space, survived after the ordeal of being entombed in melted rock or metal, then surviving again this great impact on another rock, and then survived in a sterile, foodless environment, and yet it had to evolve to survive? You've got to be kidding me. You've got a little chunk of bacteria that has just survived what would kill every single living organism on this entire planet, and this little piece of bacteria had to evolve to better itself for survival? I love reading Genesis, the creation story, when Yahuwah looked around and saw everything that he had made and saw that it was good. He made so much. He didn't have to make the flowers with such color. He didn't have to make the flowers smell so good. He didn't have to make such beautiful mountains, and he didn't have to do all of that. He made it so beautiful for our pleasure and also for his esteem to show how great he truly is. And his creation is wonderful and it all fits together perfectly. Another one of my hobbies is taking pictures of what the Creator has made. So I'm gonna close this little talk with some pictures I've taken myself in Western Arkansas. I hope you enjoy them. As always, I'd like to wish everybody much shalom. Thanks for all of your comments. Thanks for everyone subscribing. Please support us and continue to do so. And everybody have a great day. And shalom from Beta Fuller Productions.